Aloha, and welcome to The Genie Show. My name is Jeannie Joseph, and I'm so glad you're out there because I have a really great, warm and fuzzy show for you today. I have a delightful guest. Her name is Karina Cooper, and we're going to be talking about how animals can help humans heal focusing specifically on using horses in the healing process. So I have with us a very delightful equine specialist who does this assisted healing working with horses. So Karina, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. We've seen that horses can be incredibly healing. Did you have your own personal journey with horses and healing that got you inspired? I did. Uh, my biggest inspiration is a 21-year-old quarter horse named CP that I got when I was 14 years old. And he helped me through some tough teenager years, some things that I could never have gone through without him, I believe. So I've actually incorporated him into my therapy program now, and I get to watch him work with other adolescents and adults in helping them with their healing process. And that's the most fascinating aspect to me, is to see what a powerful impact he has on the lives of humans. Yeah, that's so wonderful. I know you work with children, you work with soldiers, mm -hmm. you work with just about everybody. You work with injured people, mm -hmm. people in wheelchairs. Uh, it's just extraordinary to see that work. Now, what's interesting about the work that you do, you work without the riders actually being on the horse. You work with the rider on the ground. So tell us a little bit about why you work that way. We do. We do what's called unmounted work, where we don't incorporate any riding. Um, and a big reason is, is that it removes the power and control that you have over the horse. When the horse is on the ground and is at liberty to move around and make their own decisions, that incorporates a big challenge. You have to um, use confidence and assertiveness and develop boundaries, all these skills that are necessary in your real life. Um, so by incorporating this challenge, it's helping people um, overcome issues in their lives and being able to um, use this as an example for how they can deal with these real life issues. So in real life, of course, we can't control all the situations. We can't just pull on the reins and turn things the way we want. Excellent metaphor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a wonderful practice in learning to work with a, a great being, a large being, a four-legged being that has its own will and intention, its own responses to people. And I've noticed that the horses will have very strong reactions to certain people or their energy or their mood or their presentation and and perhaps uh, you know very strongly bond with someone or very strongly not be interested in someone maybe it's affection and, and see in this in this particular situation that's the first time that this has happened <clears throat> in, with this horse in the session so there's something unique that's going on between you and that horse well I find her very attractive <laughs> 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 uh, maybe I should leave you two. <laughs> a woman that came to a demo one time, and we had uh, this horse in, and another horse in the arena, and this one tries to protect the other one um, and keep other people away from her. And this woman would keep approaching this horse, and, and he, would, he started by backing away, and he started by putting his ears back, and then he would, like, he started tossing his head, and he was giving all these, like, uh, progressively more aggressive um, signals to back off. And we were watching this happen, and she was not picking up any of these cues, and they were hugely obvious. I mean, to the point where um, he was starting to pick up his leg, like he was going to kick her. To, and we use these horses because we trust them. And... Um, but this woman was so oblivious to the signals that the horse was giving her that was so profound because she was saying that her daughter had kept telling her to back off and give her some space. And you know that was a primary relationship in her life. She had to get this message below the neck. She had to get the message that she has to pick up on signals that people are giving her to back off and to, and to like, allow people to have relationship with her. We've worked with the Army quite a bit um, and we see some soldiers come through the arena with um, either sometimes a fear or a dislike of horses. Um, sometimes there's memories attached to that fear of you know maybe a time they were bitten or fell off of a horse in the past. 
but then they're introduced to this new way of working with a horse where, like I said, they're not in control, they're on the ground, and they're having to build a relationship with the horse and develop trust with the horse. <laughs> Why do you guys think that this horse went back, one, wanted to go back with you after crossing the river the first time? Trying to protect me. You want to make sure I wasn't going to lose my legs again. So to see the transformation, sometimes within just an hour of this fear or more of a face with no emotion to a true, genuine smile at the end of a session is overwhelming. So it's a wonderful thing to have that bond and that love and that connection with a, a being that has its own free will and to some of the exercises, you do some games where we have to accomplish certain things with the horses, work as a team, work together. And uh, we have to, in some way, create a communication with the horses where they'll do what we want them to do, but we can't, of course, overpower them because they have their own will and they're not going to go along unless we've established some kind of connection and some kind of trust and bond with the horses. And mm -hmm. I think that translates to people. Sometimes people, if they've been traumatized, will tend to give up on their other relationships. They, they um, you know, will withdraw from relationships. It's one of the big parts of trauma, people who've been traumatized will give up rather than try to negotiate the challenges of dealing with another human being and what do you want and what do I want and you know the upsetness that comes up when I don't get my way or whatever mm -hmm. and so for a lot of people who've been traumatized there's a lot of avoidance or aversion to interacting and then of course isolation becomes both a symptom and exacerbates the trauma. The first thing a person needs to do when um, there is a traumatic experience is to have somebody acknowledge it and just like when you're a child and you skin your knee and your mother says, um, can we, uh, I'll kiss it and make it better, when you're saying that, you're acknowledging that there was a, a hurt, there was, a, there was pain. What has it been like to work with children with these big animals? Well, children are unique in that, especially younger children, they don't really know how to express their emotions or talk about feelings. Sometimes they don't even know what their feelings are. So using horses in this model of therapy they don't have to know what their feelings are. They don't have to give them words or labels. They can just work through it with the horses. And a lot of that healing happens just between the horse and the person. We're just there to facilitate that process. So the children are learning about themselves. They're learning about their feelings, their emotions, and how to develop skills that are necessary for a healthy transition into adulthood. Mm -hmm. And they're doing it in such a natural way, in an environment that's emotionally safe and being able to trust the horse, that the horse isn't going to betray them or judge them or anything. Everybody enters a relationship with a horse as an equal. The horses aren't going to judge them for how they look or how much money they make, where they come from. The horses are incredibly honest, non-judgmental animals. And I think that the children understand that they connect with the horse. And using horses in therapy just adds um, a unique element more than working with other animals because horses are prey animals. They're constantly aware of their surroundings. Right. And so they give feedback to children and all clients that is instantaneous and it's honest. Yes. And I think that's also very good for soldiers who've been experienced trauma, maybe you have some hypervigilance going on, to be around an animal that has that in a healthy way. So an animal has mm -hmm. tremendous sort of 360 or whatever awareness. You know, they hear, they see, they smell, they sense, the, you know, like a sixth sense almost. And it's good to see that you can have extended awareness without it being destructive or mm -hmm. uh, ruining your, the quality of your life. That this type of awareness can be a gift when you learn how to work with it, when you learn how to own it and use it in ways that are support your well-being rather than that are constantly kind of invasive because there's too much sensation or something like that. And I, one of the things I notice is that the horses really calm you down. You know, that if you come in, whatever you've got going on in your life, whatever's going on, and you get near these horse and you kind of move into their groove, you know what uh -huh. I mean? Because you can't go in there with your whatever crazy work life agenda, <laughs> you know, your insanity. You have to submit to their mm -hmm. energy and that becomes a very healing process is just submit to this very strong being that's very gentle. I mean, they're energized. They can be aggressive. I mean, they're not like, you know, little stuffed animals or something mm -hmm. like that. They have um, desires and they have uh, emotions and reactions, you know, but they also have this very grounded quality, which mm -hmm. I think is very important when people have been 
traumatized. They kind of get split apart from themselves and, and uh, you know, feeling like they're not really here and, you know, you feel like they're going to float away or something like this. And the horses can really kind of bring them back into their body, into their gut sense. And, and a lot of the exercises you gave us to do required us kind of, you know, using a sort of sixth sense. I mean, we didn't know how to do, we didn't have the knowledge. So if we didn't have the knowledge, we had to rely on our gut sense or intuition or what mm -hmm. our body was telling us. Horses are grounding because they're in connection with the earth and they're able to um, pick up on energy mm -hmm. and, and take away, you know, pain and, and, and sorrow in a way and transfer it back to the earth. It's just wonderful when the horse bonds with you. The horse put his head right here. We had it was like third eye to third eye, and his nose on my heart. You know, and it was just like we just hung out there. It was such a great feeling of kind of being recognized by this horse, that this mm -hmm. horse could sense my energy or sense that I needed some love in that way. And you know, it was a it was a great honoring of my spirit. You know, to be around that. Definitely, um, horses pick up on our emotions and our intents and our feelings and it's um, almost as if they're mirroring what is going on inside of us. Um, whether we see it or recognize it or not, the horses are mirroring this and so that gives us information about what, what we're putting out there, what our behavior is going to result in. Mm -hmm. um, so that honest feedback is what we use to help clients overcome things. Yeah, kind of to see their behavior without necessarily the judgment of somebody labeling it, oh, mm -hmm. oh you're this or oh, you're that mm -hmm. or, you, you know, whatever. But to just get that kind of immediate non-judgmental reflection, like a mirror without any judgment. Because mm -hmm. normally when we look in a mirror, we see all our bad qualities and the horses are not necessarily being critical. They're just simply reflecting what they see. If you're nervous, mm -hmm. they're going to sense your nervousness. If you're happy, they're going to sense your happiness. If you're scared, they're going to, or, or angry, oh, yeah. Or, yeah, they're going to sense all of that. Yeah. And it's in the moment. The horse doesn't care what you ate for breakfast, what you did last night. It's going to react and it's going to behave in a way of what's going on right then and there. And I think it's infinitely fascinating to sort of speculate, you know, how do horses communicate amongst each other? You know, they seem to, like when we did that thing where they were running through the arena, mm -hmm. how do they all know when to start running? How do they all know when to stop running? How do they all know how to run at a certain speed? You know what I mean? That uh -huh. a tremendous synchronicity that you see when they're uh, working as a team. Have you noticed that, like telepathy, that you have a way of communicating with your horse that defies words? Or what have you noticed about how that bond works? Just by moving in a different position, you know, either standing or sitting or uh, maybe the emotions going through your body, the horses react off of that. Um, and so I can tell if my horse is having a good day or if they're having maybe a bad day, if they're reacting differently to the other horses or if maybe they're picking up something that I'm putting out there and they're reacting to me. Um, it's Sometimes it's subtle and sometimes it's a, a huge display. Mm -hmm. And so horses are unique. They have their own personalities. They have their moods and their feelings. They also have the dynamics with each other in the herd. And like you were saying, you know, who decides wh who to, when to run or run first. That's something they've established within themselves, that herd mentality. So there's a leader, there's a follower, there's, you know, sometimes there's bullies, there's outcasts. They have mm -hmm. these roles just mm -hmm. like people do. Any group of two is a herd. And and with these guys, they live together, and um, this is their herd. Uh, Flash will um, is always on the lookout for any kind of danger to Velvet, um, and he is the kind of horse where if something is scary or frightening, he will actually want to go towards it. He will um, want to approach it or confront it. Well, I think going back for a moment, what you're talking about being in the present, I think that's so important for people who, who've had trauma is that the trauma is either constantly pulling them like a cyclone, pulling them in the past or making them worry about the future. And by just having something that's so compelling in the present, and for a lot of people who've had extreme trauma, there's nothing compelling in the, in the present. Mm -hmm. uh, and horses bring you into the present because they're, they're so compelling. I mean, just everything about them, the the way they touch, the way they look, the way they sound, the way they the, the, the pure size of them. Mm -hmm. And it, it brings you into that childlike state of being in the moment and just really appreciating their presence. So the power of the present is, a, is an important aspect of healing and the horses seem to really facilitate that. We've had um, kind, of, kind of a common theme come up when working with trauma victims is that they recall memories 
um, that maybe they haven't thought about in a very long time, but they're usually joyful memories that the horses bring out of them mm -hmm. um, from you know when they were a child and they got to go to grandpa's house and feed the horse across the fence, or they rode a horse one time at a birthday party. And so especially coming up with joyful memories and being able to experience that happiness again can be very powerful for a client that's undergone trauma yes. or is a survivor. Yes, happy therapy. Yes. <laughs> Getting a chance to Being be able to access those happy memories and yes. get past, you know, even if it is just for a moment, get past that trauma. Mm -hmm. And what about for people, I know you've worked with some people who've been bullied. Well, how has working with the horses helped people who've been kind of victimized and treated like uh, an outcast in the herd of their group? Um, look, we were talking about the horses being non-judgmental and not caring about a person's status or their looks or um, where they come from is that the horse will connect with you based upon honesty um, if, if you know your intentions are matching your actions. Um, so the horse will con can connect with clients who have been bullied and maybe where people might not accept that person, the horse will. Mm. And so that feeling of being accepted and having that trust and that, um, that bond with the horse can be um, very powerful that for that client to, to feel those emotions again. And do you sense that the horses enjoy working with people? Oh yeah, they definitely want to engage with the clients and they enjoy their jobs in the sense that they love to come up from the pasture, go in the arena, they know it's their time to work, and it is like a job for them. We don't want to overwork them, and so they have a usually just one session a day where each horse does um, so that they still feel comfortable and they still enjoy what they're doing. But you can see a connection not only just from the client side but also from the horses where they're picking up the feelings from the person, and they, they seem to know what each person needs or or what they what they want mm -hmm. um, and being able to give that to them yeah that's that wonderful. connection like you were saying yeah. you had touched heads yeah. with that horse and yeah. you know for it was a pretty long time it that was. you guys were connected yeah and it's it's something that's unexplainable where a horse just kind of picks up and they know what a person needs right we had a person come um, to an event we had and we had chairs on one side of the arena so that people could sit down if they needed to and this person had to sit down majority of the event and she told me I had to sit down because my leg was hurting really bad and during that time I was sitting down a horse approached me and it stood by me for quite some time and it actually touched his nose to my leg and I didn't think about it until I got home when I had to walk from the bus stop up that long hill to my house which normally, she said it really usually used to hurt her leg, that night the pain had gone away. Wow. And so she sent me that email as soon as she got home to tell me yes. that she really believed that the horse touching her leg and spending that moment with her took away that pain. Yeah, that's a beautiful story, beautiful story. I know you've got a miniature horse there, mm -hmm. uh, Teddy. Yes. And uh, a miniature horse is smaller than a pony. Tell me a little bit about what it's like to work with Teddy. Well, Teddy is almost two years old now, and he stands at eight hands and two inches. And he is a registered therapy horse, both nationally and on the island. Okay. And so he is able to visit nursing homes, hospitals, and schools, and hospices. And he actually can go indoors. So going indoors, we actually put little shoes on him. He's got little mini Converse shoes to mm -hmm. help with the traction so he doesn't slide or slip on the surfaces. And so he's able to visit clients and patients, and they're able to pet him. In the same way that you would use a dog or a cat for therapy, the horses are used in the same way. I think it's such good, great work that you're doing. I'm so happy that you're doing it. I'm Thank so you. happy that we're going to have an opportunity to come out and do one of our team billing exercises for the resiliency department at Tripler. And hopefully you'll be inspired to consider equine therapy or just equine entertainment. It's a, it's a wonderful way for people to get reconnected with themselves and to do some very profound healing. And I want to thank Karina Cooper for being my guest here today. Thank you for being thank my guest. Thank you for having me. Yes. You've been listening to The Genie Show. My name is Jeannie Joseph, and you can contact me with any questions or comments. So we'd love to hear from you all the time. We'll say aloha for now, and thank you for being with us.